Hello everyone, it's been a while since uh, last I made a video, so I figured I would make another one and let you guys know what's going on. Uh, first off, um, I have a ton of anti-static bags. I've got like 20 of them here, some of them are Ziploc, some of them are just small uh, bags. Uh, if you're interested in any of these, uh, I didn't want to just toss them, uh, then uh, shoot me an email or let me know on Facebook or on Twitter and uh, I will choose someone to get all 20 of these bags. So if there's some reason why you want them, put the reason in there too, um, because I'm going to be deciding who to give these to, if there's any interest in them whatsoever. Uh, secondly, I have some unused uh, circuit boards here. Uh, most of these are failures um, that uh, just kind of went by the wayside over the years because they didn't work or some of them do actually work it's just uh, I've forgotten what pieces go to what uh, but if you're interested in circuit boards please let me know and uh, you know just uh, leave a comment or whatever that you're interested in circuit boards and like I said I'll just put all the names in the pool and pick somebody to have these uh, they would be really good for anybody who's learning how to solder uh, through hole components if you just want to practice and you have some components to practice with uh, these might be for you. So just let me know. If you're interested in learning a new skill, the last few videos that I made was about how to use KeyCAD, which is a printed circuit board uh, design software. And in those videos, um, we learn how to make a headphone amplifier together on a PCB. Now I've ordered those PCBs, they're on their way, and I needed a housing to put that circuit board in. And so what I decided to do was use a jelly jar. Seems like Brandy and I go through a lot of glass jars from the hippie grocery store we frequent, so I decided to put one of them to use. The headphone amplifier will go in here, and then this will be the top. You got volume control knob, on and off switch, import and output ports. And I'm thinking about putting the circuit board in there and just sitting on the desk uh, at work, maybe make it look cool, or use it as a speaker driver instead of a headphone amplifier. However, if you don't want to go through the tutorial and you still want to make the headphone amplifier, then I'll have a link down in the description where you can purchase the circuit board. Uh, also, a link where you can go and get all of the parts for the circuit board and you just solder it up yourself. The link for the circuit board is for a website called OSH Park. I have put the design files there. You can download the design files if you want to or you can just order the circuit board straight from them. Or if you want the jelly jar, I'm sure there are many of you who are up to the task at emptying one of these. So project number two. If any of you have a pile of capacitors laying around and you can't read the numbers on the side of the capacitor anymore because they've rubbed off, then this project may help you out a lot. Several months ago on Hackaday, they featured someone who had uh, developed some Arduino code to turn your Arduino into a capacitance meter. Well, that guy has some updated code and it covers a broader range of capacitors. So if you have an Arduino, and uh, you have some time, I will put the link down below. So first, just upload the code to your Arduino. Uh, then turn on your serial monitor uh, in the Arduino software. And then just insert the capacitor in between pins uh, A0 and A2. Uh, and uh, it will give you a readout on the screen of what the capacitance value is. For any electrolytic capacitor you have, make sure that you put the positive pin in A2. So in no time at all, you'll be able to make short work of the capacitor drawer that you've been afraid, or I guess I've been afraid, to look into. So the last project I've been working on is a power bus for uh, a lot of the training modules that I make. If any of you guys have purchased training modules, you'll know that a lot of them take a 9-volt battery. Some people have purchased quite a bit of them, and putting 12 to 15 batteries in the different training modules can be a bit of a pain. So what this is, is it is a 14-inch long, board that has uh, many different inputs on it so that you can run up to 32 uh, devices off of it at a time. Uh, really all you're doing is you're replacing the battery with just a little plug that plugs right into where the 9 volt slot usually goes. Let me know if you're interested and I can include you in some of the test runs if you want. And with that I'm done. If you'd like to keep getting updates on Skinny Research and Development, if you would hit subscribe. So thanks for watching the video and I will see you next time.